Though the readings are different, as you can probably attest, they're from cycle A, and what we call this is Scrutiny Sunday, which liturgically we're into Sunday, so that's why the readings are uh, from the Gospel of John and Exodus in the first reading, and then St. Paul from Romans as well. So, um, so starting here, I, I think many of us can probably reflect on things that have happened in our life that might have changed the course in our lives or maybe our careers. And I think that is what we're encountering, encountering here are these readings from the third Sunday of Lent. I think we recognize that water is a critical resource for life. We have been through a pretty dry season so far, and as we are about to enter spring, the need for water is clearly evident. So what if, instead of depending on periodic rains, the water for life was always present, always abundant. The symbol presented to us in today's gospel is just that, living water. Natural waters come to us from outside ourselves and they are soon spent, never reaching the deeper wants of our being. However, the living water that Christ gives originates from the very depths of our being, making the soul not a basin collecting water brought to it from outside itself, but from a fountain springing, gushing, bubbling up, and flowing forth when it within us, ever fresh and ever living. Today, we celebrate the first of the three scrutinies. And I'm, I'm going to attempt to explain what the scrutinies are because there's times that I, I have to go back on, on my reading so we understand what the scrutinies are all about. And maybe you know, but this is kind of a refresher course. <clears throat> so today, we, like I said, we celebrate the first scrutiny for the elect of our RCIA class. The second and third scrutinies will be next week and the following week. And two weeks ago, <clears throat> excuse me, this class celebrated the rite of election <clears throat> at the cathedral. Now their path of initiation takes on a new complexion though. Its focus changes from one formation to one of purification and enlightenment. For this, they undergo the scrutiny rites. The scrutinies are prayers for healing, for liberation, and forgiveness, which all of us offer on behalf of the elect. They each deal with sin in a different way. But while the scrutinies deal with the acknowledgement of sin, their focus is on God's love. So the scrutinies have a twofold purpose. First, to heal all that is weak, defective, or sinful. And second, to strengthen all that is upright, strong, and good. In, the, in these rites, we ask God to assist our RCIA candidates to embrace the love of God, giving them strength against the power of sin. So each scrutiny uses a different symbol. And, the, and that symbol connects the spiritual reality and the material nature. That's kind of what symbols do. The first scrutiny uses the symbol of living waters that quench our basic thirst. This, simple, this, this, this scrutiny, this symbol, is unfolded in today's gospel reading that we just heard with the Samaritan woman at the well. The second scrutiny uses the symbol of light for our blindness. And next week, 
We'll build from the gospel reading the man that was born blind. And finally, that third scrutiny has its symbol for the gift of the fullness of life. And for this, we'll use the gospel reading of the raising of Lazarus. So our candidates have made an important choice in their lives, a choice to follow the Lord in, as disciples in the company of the Christian community. These final days of preparation involve us as a community, giving them the support they need to make this commitment. So today's celebration of the first scrutiny welcomes God's presence into the lives of these elect. It acknowledges the power of grace over sin, that power which is so clearly evident for the woman at the well. And as with the Samaritan woman, our hearts are prepared for the infusion of this living water by, rent, by naming the sin in our lives and affirmatively rejecting its power over us. And that's why Jesus told the Samaritan woman to go get her husband. He confronted her with, that, with her sin. Jesus had aroused her mind and stirred her emotions but he also had to touch her consciousness. And that meant dealing with her sin. So the image of mercy flowing like water is where, in, where Jesus encounters the woman at that well. So from the start, we know this is no ordinary meeting at that well. It is with a Samaritan with a mixed marital history, spurned by others, such that she might come to the well at the hottest time of the day when no one else was there. But there is someone there, Jesus. It is Jesus who first speaks to her in looking at where the woman is spiritually at the start, again, at the end, it's almost like two different people. The simple, this simple encounter with Jesus radically changes her into the desert of her sinful and sad and lonely existence. Jesus pours that fast flowing water of God's mercy and his love. So initially, she, she so easily misunderstands his words. She cannot let go of her limited understanding of water. Her very questions, replies, betray that failure to understand what Jesus is saying on a much deeper level. And yet Jesus gently affirms and brings to the surface her deepest need to drink from the waters of salvation, to be renewed in her relationship with God and her community. She slowly begins to hear his message and moves from being a, a woman of great suspicion to one who rushes to tell others that she has met the Messiah. So look how she describes Jesus. First, she calls him a Jew. Secondly, she calls him sir. Then a prophet. But finally, she says the Christ. Along the way, she has changed from being an outsider, sinner, to an evangelist. So in our second reading today, St. Paul clearly explains that it helps to remember and understand that faith and salvation are not something we can achieve on our own, but are God's freely 
given gift. That does not mean we are puppets in a cosmic salvation story or a passive recipients of God's actions. The truth is that with free will, our actions and our choices, our commitment to gospel living does matter before God. But Paul didn't stop at telling us that we have been justified. He went on to say that we now have hope in access to grace because we have been justified for God's love has been poured out into our hearts, reconciling us to him. In other words, because of what Christ has done by his death and resurrection, we have hope. Hope for an eternal life in God. And at the moment of judgment, God will not prove hostile to those who are faithful and in the state of grace, but his mercy will pour forth like water, giving life to who all believe in him. So during these next few weeks, we ask our elect to ponder the significant issues in their lives. We ask them to name and con confront sin. The conversion of the Samaritan woman and the townspeople were affected by the force of Jesus' word and by the receipt of life giving water. And so it is with these elect and to affect a similar conversation, or excuse me, a similar conversion for these elect, the church turns to the practice of liturgical prayer to the mass. For what is the liturgy of the mass other than a pure, inexhaustible source of living water, from which all who can thirst freely draw the gift of God. This life-giving water is gift, gift stemming from the word of God as proclaimed at Mass. So in a few moments then, let us as community join fully in the first scrutiny and we'll join our voices with those of our candidates as we prepare for God's blessing upon them. Amen.